What kind of a sound does a ripper demon make? <sighs> now that I have your attention, let's cover some things I wish I knew before starting RuneScape. And it's likely that even if you're a veteran watching this video, you'll learn a thing or two. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you're having issues finding your friends list or you quickly want to PM another player, you can simply PM them by typing slash PM, their username, and then the message in your chat box. In a similar manner, you can use the chat box to quickly wiki things by typing slash wiki and then whatever you need, or use the wiki button on the chat box itself. It even recognizes when you type in Akira Go and sends you straight to Laniakia's Slayer Master page. If you haven't already, I highly recommend turning on Freedom Classic as your camera mode under gameplay settings as it allows you to zoom out far further than the regular modern camera settings. Players can combine charged jewelry in the regular Grand Exchange and can even decamp potions and flask in the regular Grand Exchange as well using these two NPCs. While the War NPC at the PVM map cannot combine charged jewelry, he can combine jellyfish pieces in addition to potions. Instead of saving your bank presets like this, simply right click the preset number and select save. Much faster. Did you know you can change the name and icon of your bank tabs? Additionally, you can change the tab's position to a vertical placement if desired. Did you know you can favorite items on the Grand Exchange to quickly access for your favorite tabs? And yes, you can buy overload ingredient sets nowadays. You can edit existing Grand Exchange offers without having to cancel them and look for the items again, saving you a bunch of time and making it easier for you to adjust your Grand Exchange offers. You can add thousands of charges to your Drakan's medallion for Vario watches by simply using congealed blood on it. Skybox filters, which can be accessed by right-clicking your world map icon and choosing Skybox filters, allow you to gain more visibility in quests, bossing arenas, and slayer dungeons. If you have the Lorehound loot range upgrade, you can increase the range of area loot by one square in each direction. On PC, this means your area loot range goes from 7x7 to 9x9, or in this case, instead of being able to access the Swordfish, three tiles away, I can also access the Rock Cell, which is four tiles away. It's worth noting that the area loot range on mobile is pretty much double what it is on PC. Additionally, the Lore Hound with a 150 quest points upgrade can be used to find lore more quickly, including archaeology pages for mysteries. The quest point shop also has a couple of other things that are really useful, like quest dice, which you get every 25 quest points that can make you some money because of clue score rewards, and the quest chest, which allows you to reclaim certain quest items very quickly instead of having to get them back yourself. Are you sick of having empty vials in your inventory when PVMing and drinking your potions? Well, you can change that in your settings in addition to other things like auto-teleporting skilling urns. Since so many people were surprised when I first mentioned this in my interface guide, you can scale your interface in your graphic settings and you can also scale the size of your chat box and the chat in it in the chat settings and the chat and social and then chat customization. In your world select, you can click settings to turn off the world hop confirmation when hopping, allowing you to hop quickly without needing to go through another interface. And if you didn't know already, you can quickly hop to your clan mates or friends by right clicking them in the list and choosing join. It is said that subscribing to the Protox YouTube channel gives you streamer luck and increases your rare drop chances by up to 10%. Did you know that you can sell pay to play items in free to play? So if you ever need some money for a bond and you somehow have some non degradable items laying in your bank, like your Slayer tab, you can sell those on free to play worlds, get enough money to get your bond, and get back into membership. If you're having issues selling your pouches for money on the Grand Exchange after a double XP event or you're an Iron Man and you want your spirit shards back, you can actually swap your pouches and summoning scrolls at either Bogrog just south of Yanil and Lord Amlord in Prif. They will give you 70% of the shards back and if you've completed the hard turn win achievements, Lord Amlord in Prif will actually give you 80% of the shard value back. Now you've probably noticed that the penance powders, which are basically a penance aura at 50% effectiveness and available all the time as long as you have them, are quite expensive. Where well, if you've completed the Light Within quest, you can actually do a sort of daily money making method, or should I say powder of penance collecting method, by using the rapid regrowth spell on the four bushes in Hets Oasis. By doing this you'll occasionally get golden roses, which you can place inside the flower basket to turn a single warlord gig into a dazzling one which you can catch using the crocodile hunting method and then you can turn that single warlord gig shell into a powder of penance. If you have the master farmer's outfit you'll be able to do this twice per bush per day, if you don't it's only one time. You can quick alk items by dragging them to the coins icon in your inventory given that you have the alking runes. You can also quick disassemble items by dragging them to the invention icon given that you have invention unlocked. If you don't like alking or disassembling items, you can use the invention skill, create those machines and let them do it for you at the cost of divine charge. For more information, check out my invention guide. 
No one likes doing their daily keys, but did you know that you can adjust settings to auto-redeem key tokens, donating boxes and cash bags, and even auto-redeem prismatic lamps and prismatic stars based on a skill of your choosing? This does not, however, work for special event lamps like smoldering lamps, which still have to be manually activated on a certain skill. Now again, not everyone likes MTX, but if you do have Amazon Prime, you might as well claim the packages that come out every single month for XP boost, keys, and occasionally membership time as well. I promise this is the last MTX related tip. Nowadays, you're able to configure your combat dummies and place up to three at a single time, increasing combat experience per hour, especially when using area of effect abilities or items like Chinchompas for ranged. When doing any kind of trash run, either for tokens or experience, logging out is usually the fastest way of getting back to the entrance. If you have level 99 magic, chances are you spell book swap using your cape at the bank like this, but did you know you can also do it like this in the equipment interface? Much easier and faster. In gameplay settings, under skills and experience and then under the slayer skill, you can not only turn on a slayer counter, but you can also enable group assignments and longer or larger tasks to increase the amount of reaper points you gain. These settings cannot be adjusted until your current task has been completed, by the way. A very useful skill to learn is to activate combat abilities while moving or walking, especially useful for bosses where you need to move around a lot like Nyx. You can do this by simply spam clicking the floor and mashing your keybinds. If you happen to switch elite dungeons often or you're doing trilogy runs, you can convert the lucky charms in your inventory to a different type except for elite dungeon 4. You can quickly store and withdraw scrolls from your familiar using this icon. I highly suggest turning on the auto fire rate to 1. As long as your familiar has enough points, it will use a special attack so it scroll automatically. This is incredibly useful for combat familiar. You should also set your familiar combat mode to attack same target, as this is a very responsive system ideal for PvM where you switch targets often or have to kill boss minions. A large rune pouch allows you to store three types of runes in a single inventory slot. But did you know there's a grasping rune pouch that allows you to store up to four types of runes and has a 25% chance to save runes when using combat spells? If you're using Insight Fear, this thing will pay for itself eventually. Did you know that you can favorite, auto extend, and even dismiss the aura warning when trying to change auras mid combat in your aura settings? In case you didn't, you now know. By favoriting auras, you can quickly access your favorites by right-clicking the aura icon and then simply activating them from that interface. And if you hit the dismiss aura warning, you can even swap your auras mid-combat. If you'd like to, you can set up quick curses or quick prayers by right-clicking the prayer bar on your action bar and then going into those settings. You can change the name of these presets and even set it so that the next time you left-click on your prayer bar on your action bar, it chooses the last used quick prayer preset. There's a lot of things you can add to your action bar, including lodestones and teleport, but I highly suggest keybinding the eat food ability, which allows you to eat any type of food in your inventory, starting from the top to the bottom of your inventory, and a secondary bit of food like a sourdough and brew, and perhaps even a third bit of food on another keybind being blubber jellyfish to tick eat. In short, tick eating is really just you pressing all of those keybinds in rapid succession to heal up quickly. If you haven't already, you should absolutely complete the smoking kills quest because it doubles the amount of slayer points you obtain from completing tasks, and those slayer points are valuable to get things like the Slayer Helmet and adding items like the Bone Crusher to your tool belt. You can save an action bar slot by keybinding the special weapon attack in your settings instead of the icon on your action bar. When training gathering skills like woodcutting or fishing and you don't care about the items you're gathering, put them on your action bar, keybind the action bar slot and then spam them to drop the items quickly and continue chopping or fishing or whatever else you're doing. You can favorite mini games and D&Ds and be notified of them both visually and audibly in your settings. If you're tired of right clicking NPCs for thieving training, you can actually go into gameplay under interfaces and game interaction and turn on one button gameplay to simply left click the pickpocket instead of needing your right mouse button. You can combine lower tier D&D resets, being the daily or weekly ones, into higher tiered versions by right clicking them and converting them. When you make a new account, you should absolutely get an item called the Dwarven Army Axe, which you get by literally taking the boat from Tavoli to Lumbridge, unlocking the Lodestone and talking to this NPC in Burthorp. After doing so, you get an item that functions as a steel hatchet, bronze pickaxe and gives you bonus experience for low tier resources like regular logs, oak logs, copper and tin ore, and for cooking pretty much all the way up to level 99. Similarly, you should go ahead and claim the Wicked Hood and Burthorpe as well, as it provides you with teleports, free essence, and it's just great all the way up to level 99. For some reason, you don't need to even use the portable skilling stations to gain the benefits as long as you're standing one tile away from it. But even though that's the case in case it ever gets patched or whatever, I just wanted to say this, 
click on the portables just in case. Use the portables to make your items. If you hate making your own divine locations and you have level 95 dungeoneering and prif on lock, you can actually go inside the garage or horde stalker dungeon or resource dungeon and hop worlds until you find the divine skilling location of choice to get your daily limit. If you add a higher tier hatchet to a tool belt like a rune or adamant hatchet, even if you're not level 40 woodcutting yet, it will give you the highest tier hatchet you have available for your level. This does not however work with a pickaxe. If you want to get the most out of your AFK mining set, you'll have to use stone spirits of that particular ore and a perfect juju mining potion. Every time you get an ore with these two combined, your stamina will be filled up to 100%. This gives you more experience and increases progress. You probably know that legendary pets can be used to quickly finish off slayer creatures without needing the ability to do that, like for example gargoyles, and that legendary pets can pick up items for you. But did you know they're able to spawn pet droppings giving you 6 super compost every single hour you're logged in? If you log out, the timer gets paused. You can edit your legendary pet's abilities in the customizations menu, by the way. And in case you don't have one yet, the best way to obtain one nowadays is simply to convert your daily treasure hunter keys to oddments and eventually buy one for oddments, because that's free, rune coins are not. Now, if you haven't trained smithing for a while or you just came back to the game, you might not know that you can create multiple unfinished smithing items in your inventory, allowing you to smith pretty much continuously once you reach the level to start items at maximum heat because then it really becomes AFKable. For more information, check out my smithing guide. With that being said, we've covered a lot of things I wish I knew before starting RuneScape. Some of them are kind of high level tips, some are really early game tips, but I hope something in this video was useful to you and you learned something. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.